softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm your host Gary Leland and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. First, before I do anything else, let me go over our new schedule. I will upload a new show twice a month from now on. That'll be on the 1st and the 15th of every month at about 1 p.m. Central Time. That is when you'll be able to see our newest episode at www.fastpitch.tv or, or YouTube if you use YouTube. Now, fastpitch.tv is the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and it's the place to find all my softball videos and softball blogs. It's, it's basically a network for Fast Pitch softball. So please, after you watch this show, Take a look at fastpitch.tv and see what you think, okay? Now, I also want to make sure you know about my newest project, the Fast Pitch Softball Magazine. Now, the Fast Pitch Softball Magazine is a great magazine I've started producing, and it's for the Apple iPad, and it's only for the iPad, Apple iPad. So if you don't use the Apple iPad, you may want to forward this. Now, next issue comes out, new issues come out the first of every month. We have a great group of writers like Kat Osterman, Natasha Wally, and many, many more. Now, if you have an iPad, you really need to visit fastpitchmagazine.com today and subscribe. This is not a fun magazine for kids. This is a serious coaching tool for coaches, players, and parents who want to improve their skills and learn more about softball. I promise you're going to love it. Now on with the show. This week I bring you another coaching clinic I recorded at SoftballCon. Now if you're not familiar with SoftballCon, you really, really need to check out their website at softballcon.net. It's a great coaches clinic held every year in January in Louisville, Kentucky. Now this week we have a clinic for you by Ed Markham. Ed is the head coach from New Palestine High School and his clinic is Teaching the Aggressive hitters. Let's watch this now. The first year we won the uh, state championship so that was kind of uh, a good start for for us and uh, uh, I kind of joked that that probably would have been the best time to quit coaching while, uh, <laughs> while I was on top after the first year but it's too much fun. I enjoy it too much. I love softball. It's a great game. So what we're going to talk about today is teaching the aggressive hitters mindset. Okay? Uh, we're just going to run through some basic fundamentals. This is my daughter Alyssa. She played for me at New Palestine and uh, also played at uh, Indiana State. And uh, so we're just going to run through some basics. I give lessons in the winter, about 50 students, and uh, these are the types of things that I teach. Um, everybody's a little different on what they teach and uh, what they expect from their players. Uh, but these are kind of the basics that I teach. I talk about relaxing. I, I talk about uh, staying relaxed. We have to be relaxed when we're in the uh, when we're in, getting in the batter's box. So I like to just lay the bat on my shoulder and have the, the girls press it up. That gets them in a relaxed position. Okay. Uh, I don't mind if they vary from this a little bit, but. I certainly don't want the hands way down. I don't want them way up where they feel like they have to drop. So I, I think this is just kind of a, uh, an easy thing for the players to understand. Uh, and then we go into uh, the front elbow. A lot of coaches teach knob to the ball, okay? Uh, I agree with that to a point, but what I, I think the problem with that is if we give our players a, a mental image of taking the knob to the ball, all of a sudden if it's an outside pitch, what are they going to do? They're going to take their hands out, and we don't want that, okay? So I always talk about driving this front elbow. It just gives them something that they can focus on and really pull hard through the pitch by driving this front elbow forward, and that gets their hands going. Now you'll see that does take the knob to the ball if it's, on, if it's an inside pitch, okay? We always want to stay inside the ball when we're hitting. Uh, and then, probably the hardest thing for uh, girls to understand is how much power they have in their hips. And we have to use our legs. Now, I've had some great hitters that don't do a lot there. They're usually not power hitters, okay? They're, they're 
singles hitters, line drives hitters, they can find the holes. But to really get the power, what we have to do is get them to use their hips. And the way I teach it is we drive this back leg <coughs> forward, and I call it knee to knee, okay? The days of squash the bug are over because we do not want to spin and we don't want our heel going backwards, okay? So we want to push forward, turn around sideways for me. We want to push forward here where we can really drive this knee and we're going to turn the leg and drive it forward. Go ahead and turn one more. So we're going to drive it forward and really push through hard so when they finish, they're going to be like this. We want a solid front side, okay? We don't want that front knee to give. We want a solid front side, but we want to drive that back side here, okay? So this is going to be their finish uh, below their waist. All right. Uh, and then we always talk about staying in. A lot of coaches give a lot of instruction during the game to their batters. Okay. I think that confuses them. Uh, I try to do all my instruction in practice, but the one thing I'll say uh, quite a bit in the game is stay in on it. Okay. I want to remind them that their head has to stay in and they have to keep this front side closed. Okay. That's all part of driving this front elbow and really keeping this front side closed where they can come through and make good contact. Head stays down, shoulder stays in. It's also a, a lot of talk about rotational versus linear. Um, I kind of believe in both. Uh, Lisa was one that when she was younger, she hit a lot of balls to the fence. We didn't get a lot over, okay? So about her eighth grade, right before she came to high school, we kind of went to a more linear approach. And what that is, is when she gets in, she's going to press back. She's going to press her weight back, and she's going to then move forward, okay? It's very important that the head doesn't go up and down. The head can go back and forth a little bit, but it, it cannot go up and down. All right, so Alyssa became more of a linear hitter, but as she's coming through, she goes more into rotational. My younger daughter is more rotational, so it just depends. Every kid, every player is different, okay? But when Alyssa comes through, she's going to press back, and then she's going to attack forward, and then she goes into rotational with her hips, so we can really drive this back leg and get a lot more power. Okay, she held the state record at New Palestine for home runs uh, once, once she got there and she kind of got into this concept until little sister came along and broke it. Uh, she wasn't very happy about that. But, uh, uh, but that's all part of the entire movement, okay? Thanks. Uh, so that's kind of the basic fundamentals. You're gonna get a lot, you go to all the clinics, uh, everybody teaches things a little differently. Uh, but that's kind of the basics of, of what we teach, okay? Uh, not everyone swings the same, and that's very important. I know a lot of hitting coaches that try to get every girl to, to swing the exact same way, and that just doesn't happen. I've seen a lot of hitting coaches take a great hitter and make them a good hitter because they wanted them to do things their way instead of letting their kid letting their players just hit uh, probably the best hitter I, i've ever seen uh, was at new palestine she ended up going to indiana state and leading the missouri valley conference in hitting had one of the ugliest things you could do with the bat she would right before the pitch happened she would take her bat and she would lay it way back here first time i saw her hit that's really strange her hands were so good that she didn't hit for a lot of power, but she still leaves the state in doubles because that's how hard she would bring it through. Now, you know, I'm not going to change a great hitter. If I would have came in the first day and said, okay, Katie, you've got to get your hands up here, she would have looked at me like I was nuts. And I probably would have had to be nuts to change her swing. Okay? So, on those types of hitters, and most of the time in high school, we only have time to do minor adjustments. We can't do wholesale changes with our high school hitters. So we have to do uh, just minor adjustments and uh, use that 
to help them. Okay? Uh, I go by one voice. Most of my uh, players take lessons during the, the off season. But come March 4th this year, uh, and I started this about five years ago, lessons are over. I appreciate the money that parents spend. I appreciate the, the uh, it's nothing against the instructors that they have, but I want them to hear one voice, and that's mine, okay? So if I try to change something, and all of a sudden their parents go and pay $30 to an instructor, and the instructor tells them something, their parents are going to want to do that. I want them to listen to me and me only, or, or my coaching staff, okay? So that's kind of the one voice thing that I went with. The very first year I incorporated, I had a little bit of problems, uh, but really nothing major, okay? And then we go to repetition. Uh, we hit, and we hit a lot. And what I try to do is I try to get a lot of reps in, okay? And that promotes the consistency that I'm looking for. They can have, uh, all, all good hitters are going to be able to make good contact here, okay? What the, they do to get there, it may be different, but I want them to be consistent with it. So what I always talk about is get a good swing, repeat it. That's what we have to do as, as players to become good hitters, is we have to take that good swing and be able to repeat it over and over again. So I try to get a lot of reps in, uh, with my high school team, okay? Uh, so now let's talk about being an aggressive hitter. Uh, confidence. Confidence is the key. Uh, I, I took a quote from Yogi Berra, hitting is 90% mental, the other half is physical. That's a typical yogiism there. But it's exactly true. Hitting is so, the first half of it is, hitting is so mental. Uh, and to do that, the girls have to be confident in what they've done. And you can prepare them in practice. You can compare, uh, make them ready uh, for the game by giving them those reps and having them ready to go, okay? So confidence is key. Uh, they have to be a competitor. And I always talk about them competing and what they have to do to compete. And I also talk about, I can usually tell from the third base uh, box, coach's box, if they are going to have a good at bat. So oftentimes you see a kid walking up to the plate, it, it may be a tough situation. They may have struck out their last three times that game, but you can tell when they're going up to the plate by the look in their eye. Some player just got a huge hit they're pumped up. You can tell their confidence. It just goes right back to the, the confident part of that. Their confidence is sky high. So they walk up to the plate and they're ready to go. And then you've got the other kids who the moment may be just a little bit too much for them uh, or they've had a bad at bat. Who knows, with girls, they broke up with their boyfriend two hours ago or had a fight, something like that. So you can usually tell by the look in their eye um, whether they're actually going to compete that at bat. And I always talk about, that doesn't mean you're going to get a hit. It just means you're going to get, have a good at bat. All right? You can have a great at bat, and it's going to be a line shot to the left fielder that they make a spectacular play on. You can't do anything about that. Okay? Um, they have to be mentally tough. Uh, and by that, it kind of goes along with the other part. Maybe they've struck out three times. They've got to put that behind them. Okay? And that's not easy to do, is it? Uh, but they have to be mentally tough and be ready to, uh, to uh, not be afraid to fail. Okay? They, uh, failure's going to happen. It's a game of failure. Somebody bats 400 in high school, that's a great, that's a great hitter. Yet they failed six out of ten times. So they have to be able to understand on um, how to come back and how to compete after that, okay? They have to be disciplined. And you say, wait a minute, we're talking about being aggressive. What do you mean discipline? If they're not disciplined, they're not going to be aggressive hitters. They're going to be aggressive swingers. They're going to be swinging at everything. Vlad Guerrero, now he was an aggressive hitter, but he wasn't quite disciplined. 
Okay? But what we still want to do with our players is they have to understand the strike zone. What I always talk about is we swing at everything below our hands we can hit. Okay? That kind of gives them a visual, something to think about. My teams have been very good at laying off rise balls and not swinging at bad pitches over their heads. And I think it's because we talk about that so much about hitting the pitches that are below our hands. Any, anybody, players love to swing at high pitches? <coughs> yeah. She loves high pitches. Why? The ball's eye level coming in, it looks about this big. Okay? Uh, so it's something that we really have to focus on with our players to make sure they understand uh, what we expect from them. Okay? I believe at good at bat start in the dugout. And I talk to my players about when you're in the dugout, know what the pitcher's throwing. Know what she's doing in certain situations. Uh, also, know what the umpire's call. If the umpire's really, really tight, then our strike zone needs to change uh, as, as a player. Okay, so it starts in the dugout. We go to the on-deck circle. Everybody's different. Okay, uh, some players get really jacked up. They're really intense, really focused. Uh, some players, uh, Alyssa would be one. When she was playing in college, I'd see her out in the on-deck circle kind of doing this. She was humming a song to herself to try to make her relax. Okay? Everybody's different, but they still have to do whatever it takes in that on-deck circle to be ready. And then the aggressive hitter has to finish once they get in the batter's box. I always talk about it's you versus the pitcher. That's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter if the stands are full of the baseball team. It doesn't matter if uh, grandma and grandpa is there to watch you play. What it comes down to is what you do when you get in the batter's box against that pitcher. And you have to prove that you are better than that pitcher in that particular attack. Okay? Now, what I want to do uh, is I want to show a video. This was from 2009. It'll only take about a minute and a half. Uh, it's from 2009, my leadoff hitter uh, for that game. A uh, girl about this tall, weighs 100 pounds, soaking wet, uh, not a slap hitter. Uh, really had a bad year. She was a sophomore. We had one state in 2008. She was my starting second baseman, batted second in the order. Just had a great freshman year. Sophomore year, really struggled. Uh, stats weren't there. Uh, once the season was over, before we started the tourney, I pulled my whole team together and I said, it doesn't matter what you've done from this at this point. It doesn't matter if you've had a great season. It doesn't matter if you've had a bad season. Everybody's batting zero. So where you go from here is what matters. Uh, Katie was my leadoff hitter. Really, like I said, was struggling in that role, but she kind of took it on herself because I, I had to talk with her and I said, I don't have anybody else that can fill that spot, so you're going to have to do it. So this is the very first of that uh, state championship game, and she came up to bat. Okay, this is her very first at bat, leading off the game. First inning, maybe. You're good, just started. I did. Sorry. You can see her size there, okay? She's as mentally tough a kid as, I, as I've had, all right? As far as... Uh, Trying to put things behind her, just getting in and getting after it. Uh, did not get it. Sorry about this. Still buffering? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, anyway, um, what happened in that at bat? She came up um, playing against a great team, great pitcher. We had talked about, we noticed the pitcher liked to throw inside quite a bit. We had talked about maybe moving off the plate a little and really working that inside part. So Katie comes up, uh, gets down 0-2 by smashing balls foul. She stays on it, stays on it, keeps working, and uh, she ends up having a 12-pitch at bat and ends up drawing, drawing a, a leadoff walk for us. I thought that set the tone for the game. Okay, it showed she was ready to go from that very first pitch. Uh, she was able to get in, have a great at bat. I think it kind of wore the pitcher out a little bit. She drew the walk. We ended up, uh, she scored. Uh, first run of the game, first inning. Uh, we ended up winning the game 10 to nothing, set nine state uh, records in that game uh, for the uh, uh, high school championship game. And I really believe it all went back to this at bat, where she kind of sent the message of what we were able to do and what our approach was for this, uh, for this game. Um, so let's just move on. Um, now, let's talk about what makes a great hitting team. Hard work. Our players have to work hard. Um, a few years ago, Pitchers worked a whole lot harder than hitters. It's not like that anymore. Hitters are now understand if they want to be good hitters, they have to work just as hard, if not harder, than the pitchers do. So it, it comes down to hard work. If uh, Then we go to balance. And what I mean by balance is you need that good mixture of speed and power. Now, as high school coaches, we kind of have to play the hand we're dealt, right? Uh, doesn't always work out where we have that one, two hitters that can flat out fly and they're good little lefty slappers. We can use the short game uh, coming up for our power. So sometimes we have to adapt, kind of what I did with Katie, where she had to be our leadoff hitter because I couldn't go recruit one from another, from another school. It wasn't like travel ball where we could go find a specific thing. Uh, so we, you take what you have, but you really need that balance to make a great hitting team. Uh, we need depth, and I think this is the toughest thing of all in high school. I see this a lot, uh, kind of with, with average teams, you may see the first four or five hitters that are pretty good, and then it really drops off. So to be a great hitting team, we have to get that bottom half of our order to work hard so they can compete at that level. Uh, I had a, a coach, we were playing in a, a semi-state game, and a coach that we were going to play called one of our conference coaches, said, hey, what can you tell me about New Palestine? Trying to scout us. And I thought it was one of the greatest compliments that I could get, or that my team could get. He said, they hit one through 15. And that was exactly true. My, my hitters on the bench, they had to understand at any point in time, I might bring you off to hit in a key situation. So they had to be ready. But they knew that they could hit, that we could hit 1 through 15. Now, did my number 12 hitter like being on the, on the bench and not getting the opportunity to get three or four bats a game? No. But they had to understand that they were role players. And that's what they had to do. Uh, I talk a lot to my team about if you were playing for a high school down the street, uh, although you may be playing JV for me, you might be number four for them. Well, guess what? You're not at the high school down the street. Okay? So that's where we're at there. Uh, then we go back to the discipline. Uh, we have to be disciplined. We have to hit strikes in battle. I don't believe in specifically taking the first pitch or not hitting change-ups. Oh, my pitcher will throw a change-up and I'll see a coach go, oh, why did you swing at that? I told you we're not swinging at change-ups until we have two strikes. Well, guess what they just told me? I can get ahead all day on change-ups because his team's not swinging and they can't hit him or he'd let him be hit. Okay, so I don't necessarily do that. Uh, we go back to confidence, hitting his middle. Uh, 
Players must understand situations and how to drive in runs. I think this is so important. We work on this all the time. Um, runner on third, less than two outs. Look and see where the second baseman's playing. If she's back, give me a ground ball to second. That's being a team player. So we work on those situations all the time and so they understand what we need. The next thing is they have to be pressure players. Players have to be able to perform under pressure. Okay? Uh, very, very important. If they can't perform under pressure, they're probably not going to help me in a big game. So it's very important that they uh, are able to perform under pressure. I'll ask them, are you a pressure player? They'll hesitate and go, um, sometimes. That tells me they're not. They're not going to be, they, if they, if I ask them that and they go, absolutely, I love it. I want to be the person up to bat in that situation. That's who I want up there. I don't want the person that says, well, sometimes I am. Okay? So it's very important that they're, pre uh, that they're pressure players. All right? Um, just want to go through these extremely quick. Uh, I like teamwork. Uh, <laughs> I used to go watch a lot of baseball. I saw spring training baseball. I saw Chipper Jones carrying his bat and a tee out to, uh, out to hit. And I thought right then, if Chipper Jones can do it, my team can do it. Okay, you kind of get this idea of tee ball. Okay, tee is the most important thing we can do to get our reps in. I like doing a lot of one hand work where you're just swinging one hand, left hand pull throughs, right hand attacks, Okay, so we do that, and I'll even do that on a front toss. I'll have them go one hand on a front toss. Um, I love basketball, so I think that's one of the best drills you can do. Uh, I, I joke around, I know I'm from Indiana, and it's basketball, and you know, you, you guys with Louisville and Kentucky, but uh, I joke around with my basketball players. The only thing basketballs are good for is hitting with the bat. They don't like it too much. Basketball coach really doesn't like it too much. Um, but basketballs deflate, deflate them a little bit. I'll do uh, just kind of soft toss with them. And my better hitters, I'll stand them out there and let them go in an actual pitch with a bat, okay? And then I use the machine a lot. I think uh, machines are very valuable. I know they kind of get a bad rap with some coaches. I love the machine because I can't stand there from 43 feet and throw the ball 60 miles an hour. So I can, uh, replicate speed on the machine and we can get a lot of reps in there. We work on situational hitting with the machine, we work a lot on bunting, we do team drills. Uh, the one I really like is when you've got the machine and then they hit it and if they make contact they take a step forward. Now they hit it, they go how, see how far up they can go and make it a competition. Have the rest of your team standing around cheering them on. So make it a competition where they can go through. Once they miss, they're done. Or if it's just one of the drills that you want to use, once they miss, that's where they stop and they start working their way back away from the machine. Uh, I think that's a great drill to really work on, work on their swing speed and how quick they have to be to the ball. Uh, but I use that a lot. Uh, in 2003, my, my travel organization that we started was uh, is the Indy Diamond Chicks, and we were able to build uh, this facility, and it's just a 48 by 64 foot pole barn with that line, and we've got uh, nets in there. I've got one that you can see here. It's got four stations set up, and then I've got the two uh, cages where we have pitching machine, and I use that a lot. I take my high school team, once I make my varsity team, we'll go down there, we'll hit every day. I'll take them down there before every game. If it's an away game, we're going there to hit. And uh, they've gotten in a habit of that. That's a lot easier than our gym where we have to drop the cages. You've got the baseball team walking around. So we go down there and it's just us. So uh, we're very fortunate to have that. Remember to enjoy the game and the, the opportunity that we have to influence our players' lives. Uh, I appreciate all of you coming in. Uh, when Natasha Watley was speaking next door, I thought, oh great, who's going to come listen to me? But uh, I certainly appreciate everybody being here this uh, afternoon, and uh, I appreciate Matt giving me the opportunity here at the 
uh, softball comp. So if you have any questions, anybody have any questions? Uh, I'll be hanging around if you have anything. All right, thank you very much, appreciate it. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Welcome back. Now that last short clip, that was my daughter Amanda and she's telling you about my website, softballjunk.com. Make sure you write down the code number she gave you, FPTV30. Anytime you buy a softball bat on my website, you can enter the code at checkout to FPTV30 and save yourself $30 on a new softball bat. And you can use the code over and over and over and over. It's really a really great deal. You just need to remember the code, FPTV30. Now the entire reason I started this show was to promote my online business, softballjunk.com. So if you enjoy this show at all, and if you need to purchase some softball equipment, well, I really would appreciate it that you at least check out my website. And if I am the same price, or if I offer a better deal, I hope you'll buy from me. And that's at softballjunk.com. Buy from me and support the show. That's all I ask. Well, that's all for today. So until next week, this is Gary saying goodbye, and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV network. See all our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv.